Well, hello, good morning, good morning. How is everyone this morning? I hope you are doing well. I hope you are um, feeling well rested this morning. Um, I am using my phone this morning to go live. You know, sometimes I have to be at a different location and um, it's a little bit of a, a challenge you know, to uh, to do what you do away from uh, your normal setting. And so y'all bear with me this morning. I saw where I could um, share. I see you, uh, uh, my sister, Basma. I see you live with me. Um, I saw where you could share to uh, groups on here once you go live, but you can't do it before. Uh, I I think and so but you know I'm not going to worry about that right now um, I do see the option but I didn't know because I'm not used to using uh, my phone to do our live so listen all is well we're going to go with what we got here this morning good morning good morning my sister Vazma and Wani Twana, good morning. It's good to have you. Welcome. Um, Y'all, this is Real Talk Inspiration. If you see me look up every now and then, I'm looking at a desktop computer, and so I'm trying to uh, read my notes while I talk to you at the same time, and uh, it's, a, it's a challenge in a different location. Hey, Theta. How you doing this morning? God bless you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to all of you. Welcome all of my Facebook, Instagram, um, uh, YouTube families. God bless you. You are always welcome here. I want everybody to know that there is an all-inclusive church in the Dirty South. I want everybody to know that all are welcome here at First Liberty Baptist Church. But you don't have to be Baptist to worship with us. You don't have to be any particular faith. You don't even have to be Christian. Whatever your faith, whatever your belief, you are welcome here to worship with us. There is but one God. And so you all are welcome. Does not matter your denomination, where you're from, your gender expressions, your gender affections, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, Listen, y'all, all are welcome. God is not an exclusive God. God is inclusive. God welcomes everyone. And so we are only concerned about what, what God is concerned about, and that is your heart and your spiritual growth, beloved. Amen. LGBTQ plus community, you are welcome here and affirmed. Some churches will tell you, you're welcome. Yes, you're welcome. Come on, only to pray the gay away. But we, we, we know you're all right, and you just find the way you are. God made you just the way you are, and all is well. And so, beloved, you are affirmed here and accepted just as you are because we believe and we know in our hearts that God is, is in love with you just the way you are, beloved. Amen. Listen, uh, I want to get a couple of announcements uh, out of the way. I hope I can remember all of them. I'm not in my normal setting, um, but I want to um, uh, let you know that you are welcome to uh, join us on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time over on YouTube, and you will see an announcement. Uh, on our page, our Facebook page, that will uh, tell you the times that we are live over on YouTube. Now, what you can do ahead of time is go on over to YouTube and subscribe to our channel, First Liberty Church channel, and hit the little bell. It will notify you when we go live, but you'll also see an announcement, okay? And so, um, uh, you know, that'll let you know uh, when to be there and the time and everything. Sundays, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time over on YouTube. Hey, Val. How you doing? It's good to see you, my sis. 
always good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. God bless you. Happy New Year. Listen, um, also, if you would like to become a member of our First Liberty Church, there is a link at the uh, pin right at the top of our, our page on Facebook that will take you to our website. You click that link, it'll take you to our website. When you get to our website, click on the Contact Us page, the Contact page, or the Contact tab, and it'll take you to our uh, little form. You can fill out just your name, uh, some kind of uh, contact information, and you can put in the little box, I would like to become a member. Or if you have a prayer request, you can leave it there. Somebody will get back to you uh, within 24 hours. That is the plan. And so leave your prayer request. Or if you have a question, some type of concern, beloved, leave them there. But you can certainly become a member of First Liberty Church virtually by filling out that form. We are going to the building someday in the near future. We are going to the building. Amen. And we want you to come if you are ever in the area, uh, Baton Rouge, down here in the area, anywhere in the surrounding area, come and worship with us. We are going to the building, y'all. I'm telling you, we're going to have a good time. I'm telling you now. So listen, we you'll know. We'll we'll let you know in 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 um in time, and you'll have um, a notice in time to prepare yourself to come and worship with us. Um, also, um, if you would like to support us monetarily, uh, even pay your tithes or donate to First Liberty Church, you may do so uh, using Cash App. Uh, PayPal or Givelify. And those options are somewhere down in the description or on our page somewhere on Facebook. But it's Cash App, PayPal, or Givelify. And I'm telling you, you uh, will be sowing into good soil. Uh, amen. Don't you know it matters where you donate and whether it, it's good soil or not. I'm telling you, uh, First Liberty Church is good soil because we are growing here. I don't know about anybody else, wherever else people are going. I, I, I'm believing so. But um, here, I do know for sure, we are growing here at First Liberty Church. So this is good, fertile soil. Amen. And so, beloved, this concludes your announcements. Uh, we are going to pray. It's praying time. Uh, it's a new year, beloved, but there are some old situations that are still uh, in our midst. There are some situations, some concerns that have carried over into the new year. Let's face it, and we've got to deal with it. I know that we say, you know, hey, we're going to do this in the new year. We're going to do that. And all of that's wonderful. It's great to have goals and plans and all of that. But there are still some situations we still have to deal with, and we need God in on it. We need God on the scene, beloved. We want to pray for uh, Jamar um, Hamlin, uh, who was seriously in, um, um, fallen ill on the football field the other night in the Bengals and Bills game. We want to lift him up in prayer. Um, and uh, others who are struggling, going through certain situations, we want to pray, y'all. Well, listen, God is so big and so powerful that while I'm praying, you can be praying at the same time. You can be praying whatever is on your heart while I'm praying. Because guess what? God is big enough to hear every single individual prayer at the same time. As if, beloved, it was only you praying by yourself. But we are praying together. And so the Lord is able to hear us all individually. God hears our hearts. Amen. And so, beloved, bring all of your burdens now to the Lord, and we're going to pray. I see you, Chuck, checking in from Monroe, Louisiana. God bless you, brother. Happy New Year. And so, y'all, let us go before the throne of grace. And make our request made known unto God. Amen. Let us pray. 
Dear God, we come this morning thanking you. On this fifth day of a brand new year, we say thank you. We realize, Lord, that you have brought us a long way, not only down through the years, but we are thankful just for the past year, how you have kept us, how you have brought us all the way from January 5th of 2021 and 22, all the way to January 5th of 2023. Lord, we give you thanks. We have been through some things in 2022. We have struggled. We have had challenges. We have laughed. We have cried. We have felt sorrow. We have felt pain physically and emotionally. Lord, we have been through much, but we are still here. You have kept us yet another year. And Lord, we are so grateful this morning. We thank you for the many blessings you have so graciously bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, because we realize you are the one and only true and living God. And besides you, there is none other. Lord, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord. Now, we know that as good as you have been to us, Lord, we have fallen short of your glory. We have fallen short in areas where we should have been doing better by now. But we know that you're not done with us yet. And so, Lord, we give it all to you, whatever we, we need to work on, any improvement in our lives, anything we know we need to do to get better, to better ourselves, be it mental health or some type of physical situation, whatever it may be. Lord, we ask that you intervene. And that you would help us, Lord. That you would give us the wisdom we need to do what we need to do for ourselves. And whatever we can't do, Lord, you do it for us. We know you're able. And we give you thanks right now, even in advance. We thank you, Lord. Fill us now with your Holy Spirit. Fill us, Lord, so that, that we'll be the bright lights in this dark world. This bright light that reflects from your son, Jesus the Christ, who is the light of the world. We just finished celebrating Emmanuel, God with us, coming into the world as the light of of the world and those who follow jesus lord we are the light of the world also and so we thank you lord and we know that there are those who may not have yet accepted jesus as their lord as their savior uh lord we know that you love them and that you are drawing them nearer to you by your holy spirit we thank you lord for them we thank you for all of us we are all in the same boat. We all need you. And we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here this morning, to be in your presence, to approach your throne of grace and make our request made known unto you. We thank you, Lord. You have been good to us. You've put food on our tables, clothes on our backs, shoes on our feet, even the small things that we take for granted, Lord, we thank you for those things, Lord. Somebody can't flip a switch this morning and turn on the lights. Somebody can't turn the handle this morning and running water will come out. Somebody, Lord, slept on the sidewalk last night. Oh, we have much to be thankful for. There are things that we take for granted. Oh, but let us be mindful, Lord, that we ought to be thankful of everything, the small things and the big things. We give you glory, Lord. And before we close this prayer, Lord, we just want to lift up all of our burdens unto you. You know all about them. We want to lift up uh, Damar Hamlin as he struggles in the hospital this morning and fights for his life. Lord, we know you're able. We know that 
concerning his life, your will will be done. But we're going to pray anyway, Lord, that you would blow the breath of life into his lungs. We pray, Lord, that you'll cause him to breathe on his own. When you blow the breath of life into his lungs, Lord, he'll begin to breathe on his own. And his heart will pump on his own. Lord, we just thank you this morning because we know you're able. I know your will will be done, Lord, and whatever plan you have for his life, we just pray, Lord, that if he has not completed his work, here in this earth, that you would bring him on back and let him be with us and be with his family, Lord, and to be with his fans and to be the wonderful person he already was before this even happened. We know now that, Lord, if he comes on back, he's going to be even better. If you are not done with him in this earth yet, Lord, bring him back and let him finish his work in this earth. And so, Lord, I know there are others who are struggling and fighting for their lives. There are others who have serious illnesses and, and disease and medical problems. Lord, we know you're still in the healing business. We know, Lord, you're able. You're still the doctor in the sick room. You're still the surgeon in the hospital, Lord, the chief surgeon. And so we give it all to you, Lord, any sickness, any disease, touch, touch now, Lord, and heal in the name of Jesus. Heal with your healing power, Lord. It can be a mental health problem. Nothing is too hard for you. It could be an addiction problem. That's not too hard for you, Lord. A marriage problem, that is certainly not hard for you, Lord. Whatever the situation might be, Lord, we know you're able. We give it all to you, Lord. Financial difficulties, Lord, relationship problems, problems on the job, co-workers, friends, uh, uh, all kinds of issues, Lord. We don't know everybody's situation who is listening with us right now, but we know that you do, Lord. We know that you know every detail, and you know the end from the beginning. We don't need to worry about it, Lord. You told us just to pray about it and to cast all of our burdens upon you. And so we give it all to you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And so we are not going to be afraid, and we are not going to worry about it. We have given it to you now, and we are going to leave it right here. We know you're able, and we know you're going to handle it. You're going to handle it, but it'll be in your own way and in your own timing. Let us accept what you allow in spite of our prayers. Let us accept what you do change because of our prayers. Some things you're just going to go on and do anyway, Lord, but sometimes we can pray and you'll change it in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we are hopeful this morning. We are hopeful that you will bring us through and bring us out of whatever our situation might be. And we are also thankful. We give you glory now, Lord. And as we approach your word now, let us approach it with open hearts and spiritual ears so that we might understand from you, straight from heaven, what you intended your word to mean when it was written. Not man's twist on it, not what man wants to think it means, but what you intended it to mean at the time it was written. We thank you for your written word. We thank you for your word when it is spoken. We thank you for your word through the universe and in our situations, Lord. We thank you for your word in our circumstances, but we thank you for your written word. The challenge is helping us understand it the way you intended it to be understood. We look to you now, Lord, for wisdom and understanding. We thank you now. And we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor. It is in the precious and powerful 
name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. Amen and amen, beloved. Don't you know that God is not only a prayer hearing God, but God is also a prayer answering God. Nephew, I see you. How you doing? Happy New Year, Kyle. Happy New Year. It's good to see you, brother. My nephew, y'all. Hey, Kyle. Uh, listen, y'all. Listen, without further ado, listen. Let us remember that God is not only a prayer hearing God, but God is also a prayer answering God. You remember that, beloved. You remember that God has heard your prayers. Amen. Now listen, you know, uh, we have been looking at some scriptures um, that have been misinterpreted over the years. Uh, for whatever reason, people are not studying, people uh, are listening to what they've heard, you know, t uh, time and, and a time again, handed down from one generation to the other, and they're just repeating what they've heard, not studying, not understanding what the scripture really means. And so um, I'm not sure if this, going, if this is going to be the last time that I do uh, a lesson on scripture. Um, but, beloved, um, today I will. And so I'm not sure. I'm going to just let the Lord lead me. But I do have a scripture here that I want us to look at. And and, uh, and some of us, you know, um, may, be, may be directly impacted by this uh, particular scripture that has been so misinterpreted. Uh, and some of us may be indirectly um, impacted by it. But, beloved... Um, we are all impacted by misinterpreted scripture. We all are, uh, whether it's directly or indirectly. So, beloved, if it's not affecting you directly, believe me, it affects you one way or another. Amen. So, we are going to go on. I see you, Candace. Good morning, sister. Good morning. How are you? <coughs> Y'all, excuse me. Still dealing with that sinus stuff. And so, listen. We're going to go on. Look, y'all, um, you know, have you ever heard that um, only men should be leaders in the church? Only men should be pastors. And, and they have some Bible behind it, so they believe. They have some scripture behind it. Now, all of us, I know you might say, well, I'm not a, I'm not a pastor. Or I'm not, you know, concerned about, you know, the, the leadership, you know, uh, positions in the church. But, beloved, you are impacted by it. You know, I just can't understand how some women who know they have been called by God to be a leader in the church would sit in a church who does not allow women to preach let alone pastor. Amen. There are women who have been called by God, who have gifts uh, 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 to preach, gifts of wisdom, the gift of, of knowledge uh, and understanding, the gifts to interpret scripture. They have the gifts of prophecy. All of that is tied in to preaching and pastoring, beloved. And they're sitting there pregnant with these gifts and will not use them in the church because they are not allowed to use them. They have been told, you know, God has not called you. God does not call women to lead the church. And so, beloved, uh, it, it, it's been on my heart now for a few days to go ahead and address this issue. Uh, this is 1 Timothy. I want you to come with me because this is the scripture they use, beloved, to, to back it up. This is the scripture they normally use to justify discriminating against women. How dare uh, somebody have the audacity, beloved, to hinder women uh, in, in, in the gifts that God has given them for the church? How can somebody say what you cannot do when God has equipped you and gifted you to do it? The audacity. I just can't believe how people can be so bold to do something of the sort, beloved. So listen here. I want you to come with me to 1 Timothy, the third chapter. 
1 Timothy chapter 3. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not going to keep you long, beloved. I'm really not going to keep you long this morning. That That is my plan anyway. But, um, beloved, um, uh, Timothy um, is uh, Paul's son, so to speak. Paul's son in the ministry. Uh, Paul's uh, spiritual son. Uh, and he was young. Timothy was young. And remember, if I'm looking up, beloved, I'm looking up because I'm I'm looking at uh, at the text on 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 the screen. And so, uh, now you know, Paul went around and and, and established churches. He he was building up churches. And Timothy, his son in the ministry, uh, was left with the task of filling positions in the church. Primarily positions of overseers, pastors, uh, and deacons in the church. And he was uh, choosing those who would fill those positions. Now, mind you, beloved, that, that, that the scriptures were written mainly to men. When it talked about any leadership, when it talked about anything that had to do with positions in the ministry, the scriptures were written back then to men because it was a patriarchal society. And women were not allowed uh, to, to, to be leaders in the church. They couldn't even work outside of the home. They couldn't even earn any money. You know, now there were some cases later on in, in in the in the scriptures where you can see, beloved, after the Holy Spirit had been poured out, and and there were some women who went on to have their own businesses and and and, and even churches in their homes, so to speak, because there were that's where they had church church houses, you know, because of the persecution, and so beloved, um, but but but. Scripture was written to men. So let me ask you a question. If you are addressing an audience, I'm, I'm going to get to the scripture. It's 1 Timothy, the third chapter. If you are giving a speech or you're talking or you're teaching, you know, and, and you, you are addressing a certain audience, you want to speak the language that the audience will understand. If you're talking to a group of farmers, you want to use agricultural terminology. If you're speaking to a group of nurses or doctors, you want to use medical terminology. If you're talking to a group of children, you want to use language on their level. You want to use language that they can understand. Amen. And so, beloved, if you're talking to men, you want to use language that makes sense to men. Amen. Right? Okay, so you're following me thus far. You're following me. So 1 Timothy, beloved, now we're dealing with the fact that um, there are those who interpret this scripture to mean that there should only be men pastors. Mm. And so, uh, beloved, <coughs> excuse me, I see you, Antoinette. Marie, we call her Marie. That's, that's, that's the, uh, John's other sister. Hey, John, uh, uh, John's sister. And so this is um, uh, Marie. Thank you for joining us. Happy New Year, sis. First um, Timothy, the third chapter. I have nothing against uh, men being in leadership or men pastors, but just don't try to keep women down when they have been called by God as well. And so, beloved, in First Timothy, the third chapter, beloved, here Timothy is receiving instructions from Paul. Remember, he's Paul's son in the ministry. And so uh, he's instructing him on how to choose leaders, overseers, pastors, deacons. Okay, so we're going to look at verses 1 and 2, and then we're going to skip down to verses 11 and 12. Amen. So we're just going to look at those four verses. Now, Paul has written Timothy uh, this first letter. That's why it's called First Timothy. It's the first letter he wrote to Timothy. And so he says, here is a trustworthy saying. Whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. 
Now, this does not mean, beloved, that anybody could just say in their hearts, oh, I want to be this or I want to be that. You have to be led by God. And it's not just about uh, being a leader in the church. It could be whatever you do. See, some people just do things because they see other people doing it. But that may not be your calling. Your gifts and your talents and your abilities, beloved, are tied to your purpose. Your ability uh, to, to carry out a certain purpose in your life is tied to your gifts. And your gifts will make room for you, beloved. And so just because somebody else is doing something does not mean that you ought to be doing it just because they're doing it. You know, because there are people, beloved, who will see other people get praise and pats on the back and all kinds of accolades for what they are doing. And then they say, oh, I want to do that, you know. But, beloved, if you are not called and you are not equipped to do that same thing, beloved, then that is out of line with the will of God for your life. Because guess what? Nobody can do what you do better than you. What God has for you is for you. What you're gifted to do, beloved, nobody can do it like you can. And so the same person you're trying to be like is probably going to try to be like you. And so, beloved, just do whatever God called you to do and stick to that. Amen. And so, beloved, this is not saying that, you know, whoever just desires to do something because that's what they want to do. You know, whoever has the desire to do this or to do that, they can just do it because they decide they want to do it. No, they have to be called by God. My sister Alexis, how are you this morning? Happy New Year. Here. Good to see you. Welcome, my sis. Listen, and so then uh, Paul goes on in this first letter to Timothy. And he's saying, now the overseer, remember, he, he you know, he's teaching uh, Timothy how to look for overseers, pastors, leaders in the church. Amen. He, he's he's, he's uh, teaching Timothy how to find deacons and what characteristics he ought to look for in these people. And so he said in verse 2, now the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectful, hospitable, and able to teach. Now, one little portion of verse 2 I want to focus on. That's, the, that's all I'm going to focus on in verse 2. The part that says, faithful to his wife. Beloved, did you know that this is the part of the text that people who are against women preachers and women pastors use this portion of the scripture. They're saying that because it says he ought to be faithful to his wife, that a pastor must be a man. <laughs> you know, so, so beloved, remember now, uh, your audience Whoever you are writing to or whoever you're speaking to or whoever you're talking to, the language must be appropriate for that audience. So he's speaking to men. Quite naturally, beloved, since he's speaking to men, he's going to say, be faithful to your wife. Because in that culture, in that day, it was custom that you be married. Everybody was married. If you were not married, then there was some talking going on about you. You see, there was some, you know, you know how people talk, you know, there was some shoe showing uh, even today, if you're not married. Not so much as it was, uh, you know, in the past, but people have, have kind of eased up off of that a little bit and have accepted the fact that everybody don't want to get married. And so, but beloved, back in this day, uh, everybody was married. And if you were a woman and you didn't have children, that was a social, you were a social outcast. 
You had some social challenges. People were talking about you. You were married or weren't married and you didn't have any children. And so it was with the man. So since the scriptures are written to men, beloved, here is Paul talking to Timothy, instructing Timothy on how to choose an overseer. And so he's saying he must be faithful to his wife. And so today, beloved, people will take that. And say, well, you see, it says that he must be faithful to his wife. So it must be a man. That means God does not call women to preach. And that's what they base it on. That's what they base it on, beloved. They say, okay, here, I got some scripture for you. Here it is. The overseer, the pastor, the leader in the church, the bishop must be faithful to his wife. So it must be a man. That's what they're using. Beloved, if the scripture is written to men, quite naturally, that's what they're going to say. Be faithful to your wife. If they were, if, if they were writing to women, they would say, be faithful to your husband. But I'm just trying to show you, you know, we're not going to do something so deep this morning. We're not going real deep and, and long into anything this morning. I just kind of wanted to share this with you and kind of clear up a little bit of confusion because people are using this to deny women the, 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 the opportunity to use the gifts that God has given them to serve the church, to serve the body of Christ. Well, God don't call women to preach because, or uh, God said, the overseer, the leader, must be uh, the husband of, of uh, uh, faithful to his wife. So it, it's got to be a man. Beloved, uh, I've also heard this. Bear with me now. I'm trying not to keep you long this morning. I've also heard that there were no women apostles. All the disciples, the, the, the original 12 who became pastors, who became apostles, they were all men. I've heard that too. Well, they were all men. There were no women uh, uh, pa uh, uh, disi uh, disciples uh, who became apostles. There were women disciples, but none of them became church leaders. None of them became apostles. So I've heard that too. But if you look at you look at all the twelve, all twelve disciples, none of them were women. You look at the, you know when they became apostles, none of them were women. Well, if they use that, guess what? They also have to look at the fact that they were all Jews, also. So if that's what they're standing on, then they disqualify themselves from being a a, a pastor because they are not Jews. Okay, so I just thought I'd throw that out there because they all say, well, all of the all the apostles who who or led churches, uh, you know, or who were ministers, they were all men. None of them were women, where well, they were Jews too. And and, and and here in America, you know, a black pastor or uh, a, a white pastor or whoever, a Hispanic, uh, they're not Jews. They're not Jews. So if you're using the fact that they were all men, you have to use also the fact that they were all Jews. And if you're not a Jew, you're disqualified from being a pastor, male or female, if that's what they're basing it on. I'm just trying to show you, beloved, that you have to read the scriptures carefully. We have to pray about the scriptures before we read the scriptures. We have to understand them for what they meant at the time they were written, beloved. Not what we wanted to believe or wanted to say today. Not what we want to believe the scriptures mean, but what God really meant it to mean, beloved. Now, the last couple of scriptures, it goes on down here, beloved, and Paul now is writing to Timothy about deacons. Amen. Writing about deacons now. Okay. So he says, in the same way, the women 
or to be worthy of respect. What is he saying? The women ought to be worthy of respect. The women here, beloved, is talking about deacons. Yes, that's right. Women deacons. I don't see anywhere in the scriptures where there are deaconesses. You know how we have deaconesses who, who sit on one side in all white? And, and the deaconesses. I don't see any deaconesses in the scriptures. I see women deacons. Deacons. Not deaconesses. Women deacons. Beloved, and so what it's talking about here, you don't believe there are women deacons? Beloved, uh, if you go to Romans, you don't have to go there right now. If you go to Romans, the 16th chapter, in verse 1, you will see that there is a deacon named Phoebe. Phoebe. And beloved, not to mention Lydia, who was a leader. She had a church in her house. Uh, Chloe had a church in her house. Uh, uh, Deborah was not only a judge, but she was a spiritual leader, uh, a prophetess, uh, who, who covered the entire nation of Israel. Talking about women leaders, women pastors in the church, in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And not, not, not to forget about Priscilla. Beloved, what a, what Bible are they reading? When they come against women who, who, who want to serve their purpose uh, for which God has called them, and they're coming against you. Beloved, it doesn't have to be pastor or, 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 or any leader in the church. It could be whatever your position. God may have called you to be the principal of a school. And somebody might say, well, that's already a man's position. Or God might have called you to be CEO, president of the Lord's Corporation. Well, that's only a man's position. You know, you're supposed to be the, a department head. That's only a man's position. You know, but beloved, God gives women the same gifts and talents and abilities that God gives everybody else, anybody else. That God gives men and anyone else, beloved. So never let anybody tell you what you cannot do because you are a woman. Our daughters, our young girls, our teenage girls, our young women need to know that they can do whatever they have been equipped to do. To serve the purpose that God has placed them in this earth. Phoebe was a deacon, not a deaconess. So when it, when it says, you go to Romans 16, when you get a chance, Romans the 16th chapter, verse 1, you'll see it there. They didn't say deaconess. They said Phoebe, a deacon. I'm not coming against the women who sit on the side wearing the white. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> I love them dearly. I'm not coming against them. But I'm just saying, you know, uh, uh, God calls women to be uh, deacons. Phoebe is a deacon in the church. Hey, Mark. God bless you, brother. Welcome. Welcome. Listen. And so, uh, beloved, uh, the 12th verse, uh, uh, let's see, 11 uh, is where I, I, I stopped. I left off. Okay. All right. In the same way, he said, the women, the women deacons are to be worthy of respect, not malicious talkers, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. And then in verse 12, listen to this, beloved, and I'm going to be done. Watch this. A deacon must be faithful to his wife. There it is again. Well, if, 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 if they use this, this same terminology to say that, you know, pastors ought to be faithful to his wife. You know, now the NIV says faithful to his wife. The, the King James Version will say the husband of one wife. That's not talking about monogamy, uh, polygamy. Uh, they, that's talking about marrying somebody and then divorcing that person to marry somebody else. Because that's what they do. That's what they used to do. 
They would get married just because society said get married. Get married. Get married. Hurry up and marry somebody. And then they'll see another woman that they like. And they'll divorce the other woman to marry that woman. I'm telling you, that's what they did. And so what, what, what it was saying, beloved, here is you marry one time, not, not, not to divorce, just to marry somebody else. You see, and so that was the that was the thing, you know, that they would do. And so he, he's saying here, a deacon must be faithful to his wife. Okay, faithful to his wife. So see here again, beloved, they are saying that look, if this is if he must be faithful to his, his wife, then it must be a man who who needs to be a deacon. Well, how is that so when Phoebe was a deacon? How is that so when there were other deacons in the scriptures? Women. How is that so when women were pastors and judges and, and prophetesses? How is that so when, when, when we see so many we, women in leadership positions and ministry? If that's what it means, then this verse 12 ought to uh, set the record straight. A deacon must be faithful to his wife. Isn't that what it says? Well, then how did Phoebe become a deacon? <laughs> Beloved, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to get you to see how important it is to study. I'm just trying to get you to see how important it is to study for yourselves, to study to show yourselves approved and not to trust in man and, and not to believe everything you hear that has been handed down from one generation to the next. Here Paul is saying a deacon must be faithful to his wife. Well, if that makes all deacons men, how come Phoebe is a deacon? I mean, I mean, just somebody just answer that question for me. That's all. Just somebody answer that question. That's all. I'm, 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 you help me understand that. That's all. Beloved, I'm just saying, you know, I just stopped by this morning to let you know, women, listen, look, I'm hitting everybody. I'm, I, I, I'm hitting the LGBTQ plus community that on last uh, live we did uh, that the scriptures are all twisted and misinterpreted about the LGBTQ plus community. And then before that, we talked about, what did we talk about uh, uh, when we were, we were looking at scripture? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just trying to cover everybody here, you see. I mean, because people are using scripture in ways that, that, that are ungodly. If scripture is being used to harm anybody, if scripture is being used to discriminate against anybody, if scripture is being used to exclude anybody, then it is being misused. It is being mishandled. People have used the written word to justify slavery. People have used the written word to condemn the LGBTQ plus community. And people have used scripture to deny women their rights to serve in the church. And to serve in other leadership capacities. For that matter. And so beloved. I, the Lord put it on my heart. To just shed a little light. On some of these scriptures. Because that, that. That's that's not of God. If you're using scripture. To harm other people. Then you're abusing scripture. You're lying on God. And you're misusing God's word. I just thought, I just saw a lot of stuff about to tell you this morning. So, 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 beloved, I hope you're with me this morning. So then up here in verses uh, one and two, <coughs> excuse me, verses one and two, beloved, then it can't mean that a, a, a pastor or a leader of a church has to be a man because it says he must be faithful to his wife. That can't mean that. If verse 12 doesn't mean it, then uh, verse uh, 2 can't mean it. Because the Bible does not contradict itself. It might appear to contradict itself to those who do not understand it and to those who do not study. 
So, so verse 2 cannot mean that a pastor has to be a man or a leader in the church has to be a man because uh, verse 12 does not mean that uh, it, it, you know, a deacon has to be uh, a man. Can't mean that. Because if a deacon has to have one wife and that means that a deacon is a man, then Phoebe, where did Phoebe come from? Or is she trans? Is she a trans a trans woman that used to be a man? Uh, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, uh, the outer appearance used to be a man. I mean, how did Phoebe become a deacon? So that's all I'm saying, beloved. I mean, I'm done. I'm really, I'm really done, you know, with that this morning. I hope you've been blessed. I hope that you've been inspired and uplifted. I want to thank all of you for being here live with me this morning. God bless you. Remember, uh, you know, to hold your head up. Women, do not allow people to put you down. Do not allow people to deny your right to serve your purpose for being here in this earth. Do not let man dissuade you. Do not let man cause you to sleep on your purpose. And deny you the right to do what you're supposed to be doing in this earth. You have the same gifts and the same abilities as men and anybody else. Amen. LGBTQ plus community, so do you. Black and brown people, so do you. Amen. And so, beloved, you hold your head up and you be proud of who you are. Ask God to give you the strength and the courage to do what God has called you to do. They cannot stop you, beloved. They cannot stop you. And my, 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 one of my previous pastors told me that, and I never forgot it. Don't let anybody stop you. He knew what lie ahead of me. I didn't know, but he knew. He said, don't let anybody stop you. And I never, ever forgot that. So, beloved, I'm saying the same thing to you this morning. Don't let anybody stop you. Amen? You keep on going and you do what God has called you to do. If it's pastor in a church, woman, pastor. If it's preach, preach, woman. Whatever the Lord has called you to do, you do it. Amen? God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. God bless you all for being here this morning live with me. And YouTube, Instagram, Facebook families, I love you. God bless you. And we'll see you next time. Um, let's keep our heads up. Amen. God calls leaders, not men, not men. God calls leaders, not man, not mankind, but God. You listen to God and not man. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time. I love you all from the very bottom of my heart. Amen. I love you. And um, you keep your head up. Stay safe out there. God bless you. And I'll see you next time.